me that, um, oh, you can't do that. And I'm, I'm not meaning to be offensive or to be negative, but it was something that it's something that's taught. And, and I realized where I've also did it to other family members as well that are younger than me. It's a cycle that we honestly have to be cognitive of and um, understand or, or conscious enough of, to realize when we're doing it or when it's being done to us. I am going to be extremely transparent with myself. Um, I don't believe, like, I really find it hard to listen to my own inner voice at times. I want to say maybe 99% of the time I go back and I battle with myself where, well, what is the right decision for Jasmine? And am I making the right decision for Jasmine? And well, don't, shouldn't I just get a second opinion? And then after I get a second opinion, shouldn't I just get a third opinion just to make sure that I'm doing what I need to be doing. And I feel like that happens a lot. But with me, I my moon sign is in Libra, which is an air sign. So we're all about thoughts, but at the same time, we're all about balance. So I begin looking up things about how to believe in yourself. And I was reading this one article on tinybuddha.com. It was a blog um, written by Melissa. And she was saying, when she was younger, that she wanted to be an artist and how she was super excited and she and she would, she would tell everybody about her wanting to be an artist and people would be like, well, that's not, that's not, well, art's good and all, but let's find a realistic job. Like, because art's good, but you don't make that enough money. You don't make enough money in art. So how about you doing art as a hobby and then find something realistic? And I realized that, wow. Like people really do speak down to others. And I know I've done it. I know I've been guilty enough of doing it myself, but I do it more so with myself. Where I'll talk to myself that I get pumped up for, and then I'm like, well, I can't really do that. And then I start doubting myself. And then that one seed sprouts into like a garden of weeds. And I've done that throughout my life. And it's really hard trying to turn it around or to correct the behavior, shall I say, um, because it's, it's, it's a learned pattern of mine. And they always say, well, scientifically it says that it takes 30 days to break a pattern. But if I'm not conscious enough of it that I'm doing it or when I'm doing it or when, when it's being done to me, how can I break that pattern if I don't always catch it? And so I started looking up ways to start believing in yourself. And I found this um, thing because it's always, whenever I would look it up or whenever I would ask for advice, people would be like, well, focus on your weakness. Well, if I focus on my weakness, then I'm always going to be feeling doubtful of myself because obviously your, weak, your weakest part of you is your weakest link. And so I found something that said, focus on your strength instead of focusing on your weakness. Because if you constantly focus on the good in you, you're, you're gonna be able to master that other side of you, your shadow side part of you. And I also realized me, self, me doubting myself was part of my shadow side. So in the, in the article, it says, when you fail over and over at something that seems easy to other, it's nearly impossible about to believe in yourself. Sometimes you tend to focus on things you can't do. That's because you feel weakness more keenly. They're painfully highlighted in your mind. Symbols of shame, weakness, and failure. I'm bad at this quickly escalates to I'll never be good at anything. The good news is, is that everyone has weaknesses and strengths. You need to determine how to identify your strengths so that you can get the most mileage out of them. The solution starts to build in confidence right away. So I was like, okay, well, what are my strengths? What am I good at? And then I also made a list of, I, Ms. Kim has always taught us to know thyself. Like you have to know the good and the bad. With me, I made, I sat down, made a list, made a mental list. And I was like, all right, well, the weaknesses list, well, to me is a little long, but that's because I'm super critical of myself. I've always been harder on myself than I am of other people because I feel like if I can't do it and if I can't get it right, then something's wrong with me. But then again, that's also playing into the not believing in yourself. 
self doubt. Moving on, and something stuck out. It says a common habit of successful people is to focus on the positive, look they excel at, and delegate weaknesses to others instead of worrying about and not measuring up. But how do I delegate? I, I thought thought of thinking about. It. I was like, well, how do I delegate my weaknesses to others? If I'm working on myself and I need to work on both my strengths and my weaknesses, how do I delegate my weaknesses? And then I think about the people I surround myself with and I, I they inspire me because some of my weaknesses they are their strong suits. And I was like, well, okay. I could see how I could delegate my weaknesses to others or the beings around me. I could take how they use their strengths which are some of my weaknesses and I could maybe work out a plan for it that works for me or modify some of the things that they do just for me and implement that and something even more well if I do that with my weaknesses I could also start doing that for my shadow work and my shadow side And then the second second thing that stood out was be your own coach. Now I am horrible at coaching. Well, I feel like I am horrible at coaching myself. I give great advice to others, but I cannot give advice. Well, I feel like I can't give advice to myself. It's to you know what it is about. Actually, no, that's a lie. I do know what it is. It's because I won't. There are certain things that I won't want to deal with interpersonally. So there are things about myself that I don't want to deal with. But I know that if I end up, if I have to coach myself, I'll end up having to deal with it. And so I kind of sort of use a little bit of escapism mm -hmm. where I try to avoid those issues, but they always end up coming back up. So it says, great coaches and managers lead by empowering people to succeed with the right tools, education, resources, and become excellent. They interact with people using approaches like conversational intelligence to put people at ease and bring out the best in everyone. So I know that coaching myself is one of my, um, not well, coaching myself is not my strongest point. So I started thinking, well, how can I end up coaching myself? How can I end up? coaching myself into well, the things that I think about myself I started thinking the, the things that I think about myself when I say it to someone that I care about and I said no because I'm super critical and sometimes I am all kinds of words to myself that are really really unkind and I was like well if I wouldn't say this to someone else why do I say it to me why do I have that conversation with myself like, why do I talk down about myself and I realized that that is something that I needed to check. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I found out that while reading this article, I realized that the trick to becoming a coach for myself is to basically approach myself in a non-judgmental aspect or perspective. Because I am so judgmental of myself, I had to do something that, or I had to I have to start doing something that I'm not used to. And so I'm always able to see the, um, the bigger picture and everything, except for when it comes to myself. So I was like, well, maybe if I start doing that with myself, I could start, start being, or gaining some confidence because there are things in my past that have both triggered me and have affected how I feel about myself. And the beer will be cut down severely by myself and by others. And so this is where it got difficult to me, or well, difficult for me. It said, um, identify the parts of your life we are least satisfied and keep and, and keeping an open mind with where you ultimately want to be, create long-term goals that are manageable for you. Now, I am not a goal-setting person. 
I am a fly by your seat. Like if it has, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, well, and go along with that. I, I don't write goals down for myself. It is hard for me um, to do that. So I was like, okay, well, what goals would I want to set for myself? so I could gain confidence or so my confidence could grow. And I was like, well, one of them would be um, being able to teach a class and not be like nervous and almost have an anxiety attack like five minutes beforehand um, or feel with nerves throughout the whole thing. Another goal of mine was actually to maybe take it up a notch and be able to talk into an audience. And so those are some goals of mine that I wrote down. Um, and another one, well, one of my goals was to be able to sit down with myself and be 100% honest and deal with why I don't believe in myself and deal with the root of that. And it's, I am terrified to work on because it brings up or it triggers a lot within me. And then when I was reading the article, the number three thing she said was to embrace who you are. She asked, how can you have faith in yourself when you don't know who you really are? Or worse, you're trying hard to be someone you're not. Self-confidence self -confidence comes from embracing who you are and what's important to you. It does not come from being to impress people. Easier said than done. The pressure to fit into be normal is strong. And it starts early. That's fine if you want to live an unremarkable life. But you're here reading this article because that's not the life for you. You want something more. To start believing, start, to start believing you can have the life you want, you must dig deep to discover what will look like you. You must understand what makes you unique and celebrate those things. Now, I had started doing this. Um, when I was looking, when Miss Kim gave me my updated um, natal chart and all in my natal chart, it was speaking about how I am really, really smart. Like it was, it was kind of sort of saying like I was a genius in, in some aspect and I was like, no, I'm not. And then like, I started thinking back to when I was a child and I was like, uh, I am smart. But in my childhood, I had cousins and relatives saying that because of the way I articulated myself that I thought that I was so I ended up dumbing down myself to fit in and that ended up not working either and then what also stuck stuck out to me about this article is it says embrace who you are for the longest time I did not embrace who I was I, I want to say it was probably last year when I started embracing every aspect of who I am and what I am um, and it's only because I started facing, um, different things and I had to sit down and it's actually when I started writing my blog or blog about it. And I realized that I had been wearing this mask and then me wearing this mask, trying to make other people accept me that I was slowly chipping away and killing who I really was to appease others and it wasn't making me any happier like I was doing things to make other people happy but what about my happiness like I, I had to stop and be like well what about what Jasmine wants what about I'm happy like how can I make Jasmine happy because right now Jasmine's not happy Jasmine is depressed um Jasmine doesn't like who she is when she looks in the mirror and I want to say it was my higher self and she was like take the mask off it's time to take the mask off it's time to take the mask off start speaking your truth start standing in your truth and start being who you want to be freely and it's been a hard process that's because like i said i i have low confidence like i'm building up my confidence i've just begun to build up my confidence um so yeah that's all i have Ms. Kim, did you want to add anything? Yeah, um, and everybody can add, because I don't think that this is an area that 
any of us actually have not suffered from or maybe are not going through like um i don't i don't think that anyone has surpassed the voices of the past um i believe that the voices of our past come in different um situations such as we did the class on shadow and a lot of people identified the shadow but they didn't identify emotions and um the conversations some people did not identify the emotions and conversations and it's important because we are still in a shadow area and we just went into mercury um being vulnerable to be able to um say that you are um you have low confidence is to me um, admitting that you have a weakness and that's where you can build. Everyone has a thought on how to do it. Um, I feel like whenever we're able to raise our hand in class, which I wouldn't do because I felt like people would look at me funny because I didn't know the answer, then um, that was a problem. But at this point, um, what I've learned is it's okay to raise my hand and say, no, I don't know, because most people don't know. And if everybody admitted that they didn't know, instead of fabricating some kind of idea answer for everything, I wanna say every damn thing, then um, what happens is we would be able to raise our hands together and say, we don't know. And it would be like, I'm every woman. We wouldn't be uh, some woman trying uh, or, or living in a world where I feel like I have to have an answer. Now the answers that we do have are wonderful especially if they point us in a direction you know like here self-coaching or um having yeah self-coaching david said that he had to encourage himself in the lord people that find themselves being alone instead of fitting in they self-coach and what's wrong with it I mean, the thing that's, I, I, I feel like what's wrong with it is that we have been living or thinking that the external way was great, right? And so now we find that we got to come inside. Um, I just hear New Edition now singing, Can You Stand the Rain? We got to come in from out of the rain and um, um, deal with what's inside. You know what I'm saying? Because really, can you stand the rain is uh, something that really says, can you come inside? Cause you gotta go inside or deal with the rain and the rain is the issues. That's what they talking about, right? And, and some people may not get what I'm saying, but I, I do hear songs for inspiration or to lead people. And that's where I am. Can you stand the rain? The rain is the rain of emotions and thoughts that you are experiencing right now that you may not want other people to know because you want to you want people to know that, you know, you're strong. But that to me, that's my opinion. That's not strength. When you are weak, you want to confess it so somebody can help you to grow. To be able to stand up and say that. You know, you're low in confidence. Uh, you're not alone. You know what? All of this year has taken confidence away from us that we really have to rebuild. Uh, every round um, that we go through with life takes something from us and we have to regain it because nothing stays the same. So why would I, in, in um, essence, lie to myself and say that I'm confident you know, after I just went through a, um, a, a bit of another dark night of the soul, I'm rebuilding. And the reason why I'm rebuilding is because I'm not the same. The dark night is taking me through a guidance of spirit. That's me. But I'm saying this here, a lot of people stay in the same place because they don't want to rebuild who they are. They wanna stay holding on to who they have been. That is outdated, right? All right, so who's next? Naila got facade. It's a facade. Go ahead. Definitely a facade. Um, I just typed something in the chat and I already forgot what I typed. <laughs> um, something that I learned. Um, 
Oh yeah, uh, about the stories that we create in our in our minds about what people are going to think, what people are going to say, and it's based on, as you said, Miss Kim, uh, old information. It may not even be true, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But we, so many people have kept themselves in this like mental entraption because they fear what other say but it's just like who even cares like one of the things that I always have to remind myself and it's it's dwindling now like I have to remind myself less and less and less of this because it's it's penetrated but it's just like um you know you don't just reach a certain level of consciousness overnight and I have to tell myself like, Nayeli, you've put in work. And it's funny because I was telling my mom earlier today, like, um, you know, I didn't, yeah, I chose this path before I incarnated here, but I consciously didn't choose the path that I'm on. It chose me. So it's just like, knowing that I've grown so much in consciousness and there's, and most of the people that you're even concerned about are unconscious. It's just like, why the hell do you care what someone who is unconscious of what's really going on thinks or says anyway? Like it's so irrelevant, it's old. So that's just something that, that has helped, <clears throat> helped me. Um, Yeah, anybody else? I think that that's wonderful. And I like entrapment because we trap ourselves holding on to old, outdated information. Yesterday's information is old, you know? So who who else wants to add to this? Because everyone needs, uh, yeah, go ahead. And I'm sorry. And I'll just also add that, um, not that it matters, but just being a a person who's observant, I can still see the people who, talk a good game, you know, like talk about, uh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm aware. But when you kind of observe them, you're just like, yeah, okay. But, and then it's just like, those are sometimes part of the people that you're concerned about and it's really no reason to be concerned. But congratulations to you, Jasmine. It's not easy, especially for your first time. <laughs> So uh, I'm proud of you. Congratulations. And you did a wonderful job. And this is just the beginning. Yeah. And thank you for your transparency, because that's another thing, like people out here talking and, you know, speaking rhetoric and, and theory. But but my thing is like, until you could be totally real with then you're not saying nothing to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I posted a video on my page that took me seven days to post. (laughs) Not be, and I knew I was going to post it, but I had to like get over myself for seven days because it was so raw and so real and so vulnerable that I was just like, oof, yikes. But, you know, and my thing, my thing is not to big myself up, but I understand the courage that that took for me. And I understand the courage that what you just shared took for you. And that is what's necessary and required in these times because no one cares about rhetoric or theory anymore. That's old. What have you done? How did you do it? Where were you and who are you now? And how'd you get there? That's what people care about. And, you know, I'm going to say this here that I um, meet a lot of people that are shut up in their voice. And so um, I really try to get them to speak and, um, you know, to really uh, view their ability to speak. But also, um, if you have entertainment, there was a little girl over here. Well, my daughter-in-law's niece, she's she is a entertainer. I mean, I just told her mother to get her on um on video or or into um you know some modeling classes because it's not just that she's an entertainer but she's an old soul before people are able to shut her down because she's four years old and the wisdom that she has is something that many of us have had but someone 
was trying to knock it out of us to shut us up. You know, you have a lot of people I found, even um, loved ones, let's just talk about it real and come with it. A lot of people, they, they're listening, but they need to open their mouths. There is a balance to opening your mouth and shutting up. And so there's a lot of people, our loved ones who have competed with us and um, they tried to shut us up and they still do. You have husbands and wives, uh, you have um, brothers and sisters, you got mothers and fathers that have competed with children. And this is not a bad thing. It is a uh, wisdom that identifies it. And you know, I don't want anybody's family to misunderstand what I'm saying, but I, I do want people to know that God gave you a voice and whatever capabilities that you have to encourage people, it is, especially right now with, um, Mercury in North Node, that is the communication center. You see, if you're not communicating and you have the ability to communicate or put yourself in a position of limelight or even come into this venue for others to hear something about you that you have, you robbing yourself because that's what it's about. It don't cost you nothing to um, just say, you know, I can identify with that and I'm not trying to put anybody out there. I'm just giving you food for thought. If you have people that come to you, I'm, you know, working with people outside of this place, you got m m people that have been mentally shut down and in their voice. But then, you know, I'm going to convince you that you can say whatever you want to say within the realms of respect. Because how will you uh, be able to um, actually defend yourself if you're always shut up? Now, there is a balance in a time and a season. Sometimes you may be in this life where you've had to go through um, the school of hard knocks in order for you to evaluate what you went through to get to the next place. Like, you know, you got people that have been... Um, mentally abused, physically, domestically abused, and they still feel like even though they're not in those situations that they can't, they can't get out of the prison. The entrapment of the prison of the mind. You know, it, what you said is so true, Ms. Kent, and, and and I actually was having this conversation with Spirit the other day. And, you know, I have an uncle who is um, a recovering crackhead, right? And he's been clean for years. But one thing that he told my brother years ago is that you, the people who get clean is when suicide starts looking like a good idea to them right and i thought about that the other day as i was processing what i knew my next step was which was to step into my freedom and i just heard spirit say like the difference between the people who do it and don't is because if you don't that's like suicide mm -hmm. yep that's suicide and, and I, you know, drug addicts, they have a lot to tell if they can overcome or ex drug addicts. My father was on heroin, um, probably about until I was 11 years old. And, um, one of the things that he did tell me is that he, you know, we really feel like from what he was saying is that he was doing heroin because he was hearing voices. And so you know, we could kind of like look at where the voices are coming from, because see here, all of us could go in and become drug addicts or some kind of addict. It could be sex. Um, it could be drama. It could be, um, you know, codependency. Um, um, yesterday, I was talking about attention whores. Uh, it can be any of these things that is an addictive type of personality that cause um, attention to you needing something to numb down um, the voices and what you really feel. Because the voices are coming from, um, like we have emotional prison. The emotional prison is a part of um, emotions that were um, 
they it's also it's like a transference so i'm gonna make you feel like i feel um and and the catch to that is not easy you know but the uh the alteration you gotta alter it because these people and even like with him he was trying to numb something down and mask it instead of talking to people and being vulnerable and saying that you know my confidence is low um he was he, he was taking drugs and then he became an abuser you know to my mom and so um from that i learned a lot about my own self-awareness and what i could be and what i should not be um i also learned that he really was not necessary in my life in a sense that I was I was to be, you know, a, a produce of him getting here and working out some issues that my family on both sides have. But if my father had been a part of my life the entire time, then it wouldn't have been per se what God wanted. What God wanted is what happened. And so the rest of it, I figured out for myself, whereas a lot of people feel like they can't escape what they were given. If he was supposed to be there all the time, he would have been. If he was not, then he wouldn't. Everything is in divine alignment. And yes, we make choices to alter things. But I do believe that the, the, the heavens alter those things to help us out. I really do. So in, in my mind, someone as himself, he was going through emotional issues. He numbed it with heroin. That was his choice. You see, the choice is, is that I can make a healthy transference if I could get the information, if I could even figure out what is wrong with me. If I could, you know, she said, take the mask off. Why, why do we wear that? You know, all of us have wore it, it's true. But why do you feel that you're, you know, you're going to grow in life and you know now, cause you, you've been here hanging around with me. The mask is the lie from the pit of hell. I mean, let me just tell you what I told Jasmine. Because I'm going to tell you about people and y'all can say I'm wrong, but I want you to have food for thought. Don't don't try escapism around me because all that optimism when you're going through and you depressed, I can see you. Just say you're depressed. That's better, it's better to tell the truth than to lie. How do I know? Man, I'm older than all of y'all and I've done it. You know, I'd rather sit in my feelings and say I hate someone than to deny the power of saying it. Because if I could release that power and say I hate them, then the next thing is I'm free. Surely I wanna be forgiven, but I'm tired of always forgiving. And saying it with and that I hate you. Now I will retract it because you know, some people is like saying, oh my God, she did not say that. I did say it because I'm about truth. If I hold it inside of me, then that means that the universe still know. I mean, who are we tricking? It's all about getting real with yourself, right? <laughs> people don't even want to hear you say it. They don't want you, they don't want you to tell the truth, but you got to be truthful. Now I, I'm gonna say this here: if you dwelling, yeah, I don't want to keep hearing it because that's a part of recreating your that narrative. Your confidence is never gonna get lifted if you do not begin today and say, um, yes, um, today that yeah, I'm low in confidence, but I'm working on it, which is why you know, you know, she she is talking about it she she gonna talk about it some more too why because the more you you talk about something and you teach on it the more you get to know about it i mean hey i don't know all that i know um just because i went through stuff i went and studied how to overcome it you know like how do you take your power back 
You got to become confident enough to take your power back and also stand up against those that have uh, pretty much violated you. It is not about fighting them in the spirit. I mean, in the flesh, it's about fighting in the spirit and then being able to be standing confidently because you know God is on your side. But it also means that you confident in yourself and you believe that God is not on your side, but standing within you. Standing through you. David. David, when I went through the first dark night of the soul, David is all I could read about because David was doing so much good for the people. Now, let me just here switch a little bit because I got to tell y'all this here. The funny thing about this is, is yes, we're in a time where you know, the women are being uplifted and they don't even know it. So I need for you to get into the flow of the energy. Women are being uplifted and they don't know it. If you stay down on your luck, then you're going to be down. How do you get down? You better get transparent because masking and escapism and avoidance is not going to get you into this energy flow where we're going. And it means you're going to cry because you're crying because old energy is trying to come out of you that has been inside of you. You know, I did a little bit of discussion on this here and I did a video. Old energy that's been in people for about 10 years trying to come out of them is like you have not went to the bathroom for 10 years. You've been holding on to some of the energy and it's not like it's a bad thing. It is where we're realizing that we had some old ideas, which are energy. We're sitting on them and we're not releasing them. Some of the tears that you're crying has nothing to do with what you're going through right now. It has to do with the pain in your body because you need to release that energy, the push. You know, I press forward towards the high mark and the calling in Christ. The press is in the, the, the grapes being, being, being crushed. That means that it's something trying to press out of you so that you can get through. Press forward. It is not you pressing forward. Energy has to press forward. I mean, press out of you. That is not conducive to where you're going to in order for you to go forward. You cannot go forward with the same old stuff. All of these men we're talking about, back to, to David. He said, I encourage myself in the Lord. He had to encourage himself because no one else was there. When all the world is against you. And yes, it's felt like to many people in this year, especially that God had disappeared. He said he'd be quiet for a time. It don't mean that he's not with us. You cannot forget where you're going, ladies. Some people here are ladies, but they're turning into women. Women are defined by the warrior in them. And the warrior is not always able to get to another warrior. Warriors are leaders. David was alone. He was a 13 year old boy and he was uh, serving a, a king that was jealous of him after he had slayed Goliath. Put yourself in his position and just say, I am that woman. If you don't psych yourself out of the old mindset, you will always be there. The person that he loved, he loved Saul. Then he was, he was very close to Saul's son, but he's running for years upon years before he actually took the throne. When you look at yourself, and I say that because why did I get that person to look at and to walk through? Because he was the one that I seen that had the most issues like I did. Wasn't nobody there. And it's not a bad thing to say, it's just how life is for some of us. Why? Because that's what's going to make you stronger. You know, I. I had um, Whitney playing, I'm every woman. You know, when, when I have opponents, 
it's not really how I want them to see me. It's just how I want God to help me to show up for the time. See, I can win being Kim. I really can. But will it be sin after Kim step in and win? That's why I, I, I shut my mouth a whole lot of times dealing with people. Because I can take you on. I got a mouth just like a lot of people. You're not, you know, you know what I'm saying? So you got to look at yourself and know what is it that you really are weak to? What is it? What is it that people think about you? Jesus asked that question because see, sometimes people are competing with you because they want you to whoop their ass in the spirit. That's the way you do it. They want you to come at them in the flesh, but you better go in. See, if you go in as Kim, and I'll tell you everything that I might say to go and meet my, opponent, my opponents. And he said, do not meditate on what you will do. Because if you meditate on what you will do as a fleshly person, that's all you're going to get. Change your mind about the battle. Because you're battling with yourself when they show up. This is part of you. They're you. They're parts of you that have to go down. When you overcome them, low self-confidence, then you will rise. I would take it up and I would say, I will be confident going in because that's just how the battle is. If a 13 year old boy could take a, a giant down, then I got to read and get the spirit of that boy. And that's one of the reasons why I would read him. You know, a lot of people say, you know, they think that I'm, I'm strong and I'm glad that you think that, but hey, I got to refill and reserve and put all that information in me to make myself think that because I have went through times when people tried to make me think other than that. Love is a funny thing. And if you love, you generally will trust people, right? See, that's why Jesus went to the cross. The 12 people that was with him, he trusted them. Of course, it was what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to go, but the flesh stuff that went on. Don't you think that when he was on the cross, he lost confidence? The reason why I bring it up is because even the son of man, loses something when he is going through a cross experience. But how long is the cross gonna be for you and I before we get all of what's said? You know, oh, well, I just, you know, I need peace. Remove yourself from some of the stuff that you got going on with these folks and you will have it. You, you know, you recognize whether or not you like being in that fight. I'm not underestimating anything that anybody's going through. There's a way to get out of it. There's a way to get out. But the mind has got to change the way it thinks about the fight that you go through. It has to change. You see, a lot of people have said, oh, you know, you just, <laughs> you run. Well, you know what? I found that I don't have to be praying about everything. The Bible say pick and choose your battle. So why are you fighting everything? Right? That's enough to take your confidence away, right? You trying to stand up and fight everything. You trying to deny that uh, you have low confidence, by the way, and you lying, right? What difference does it make if they think that? It's better for your enemy to think that you lose in any way. They won't know which game you come at, which end you coming out of. The mind. Some people think you done lost everything. They don't know what God got for you. Let them think what they want to think, wisdom. Because when your enemies know what you got going on, they coming at that.
Life is not what people have shown us. Life is not what we thought it was about. You wise in your dealings. Wisdom means that people don't need to know what you got. They don't need to know where you're going. They don't need to know what you're doing. Why? Because that's when you're open to all types of attacks, especially when you have a light shining. Your victory is in you and the wisdom on how you navigate through life. And I know that some people don't want to kind of like hear what I, wisdom says to be wise. That means that you got to go about it a different way that you've been going, you've been going at it. I will give you the hidden treasures that are laid up in darkness. That's wisdom saying everybody can't have it. Only the ones that know how to go and get it from the darkness. Who will go into the dark and get the treasures? And then, you know, when you've been taught that the treasure is sitting out there in your yard, <laughs> how you going to change your mind to know that you got to go into the dark? Some people saying, OK, well, I, ain't, I don't want that treasure then. And it's the best treasure that you could get because the dude that gave up everything to get the Pearl of Prize had to go down deep. You know why people don't want to go down deep? Everything we talking about is down there. Don't nobody want to touch it. It's too much pain going down deep, but he gave up everything to get the pearl of wisdom. The narrative there is that you must release everything to get all that there is. The mind. The mind. So where are you at today when you find that wisdom is better than anything? That's where your confidence is. Someone that gives up all the riches that he had, you know that that pearl of prize had to be something. And it really wasn't about pearl because pearls, pearls are indicative to wisdom. So all of the money in the world cannot suffice. All of the love. That, that a human being can give you cannot suffice. Everything that the human being has said there is, it cannot suffice because a man gives up everything. And then when you go and you study philosophers, they gave up because they were studying for wisdom. And here it is, all of them is men. They ain't said nothing about women, although hidden figures tells you something, right? But you got to understand why we're being faced with this because the time is coming for, wis for women, for women, a uh, wisdom women. Yeah, it's coming. So, okay, I gave enough information. Wisdom is the key. It is better than money because after you went, and you circulate it and you know you put people on display and you tell them you know your voice needs to be heard and your mind is great and you see the thing about this is is that people don't believe because they keep hanging around people that don't have the same things that they have so then you come back i'm talking you into it again you got other women on here that's talking to you and you're talking you into it again. Then you go back with them same people to snatch back the word. Stay in a covenant where people are growing you. Now, I don't need you to be in nothing with me because I'm going to get old and die like most people do. But everybody is not freely given like I am. This wisdom will cost you with a lot of uh, people that I know. This wisdom will cost you, it costs me. In order for me to know about the Pearl of Prize, I can tell you I've lost about three times seemingly. I always gain back. 
But I'm telling you the part that really matters is your mind breaking the entrapment of prison. Believing that because somebody left you or you have lost something, as long as you focus on it, it's gonna be like that. Take your mind out of it and shift into the promise that you want, not what they're trying to give you. To hell with them. Because if you shift, they're going to go to hell anyway. Because that's their focus, is to make you go to hell. Do not play into their game. And it's not about them. I'm telling you what their focus is. Your enemies are looking at you, but you don't have to look at them. That means that God is not the foresight. You got to figure out that one first, and that is not up to me to tell you. It's up to you to figure it out. Because if things matter to everybody and that makes you feel good about yourself and confident, rock on. They still mad at you, Kim. Because you ain't dead yet. <laughs> well, I'm going to outlive you because you ain't as important to me as you think you are. Goodbye. Right? That's how you got to see it. And it's not like you, you never did care about anybody or love them, but that's where you got to put them. You rock on, baby. You're in today and out tomorrow. We live and we laugh. We cry, we hurt. Yes, we do. But if people monopolize your mind and whatever is going on with them, then how can you get a focus to get the hell out of what y'all created? Get out of hell. Let them, let them go to hell. That's what it's about. Who's going to be the first to hell? Who's going to be the first to get out? And I'm not focused on you or them. I'm just telling you, your mind, it is either the playground for the gods or for the devil. And it's nothing that I've been through that I'm saying is not, uh, is, is not, it, it's easy. It is hard, but I, I prefer to press in towards the high calling and the mark of Christ in me and focus on me and how I'm going to navigate through a situation than stupid people that's trying to get me snared up. And that is because I had a part of me that resonated with them that says it's gonna be you or them because you manifested this, Kim. Who gonna win? Listen, I wish that we could both win together. But since you, you want to play like this, you're going, you going down. You have to, if that's the way it goes. But then I remember the scripture that says, even when you're finishing the, 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 the finish line, a tortoise at that pace, just long as you finish, so keep going. So you see, it don't matter about them. See, what matters is, is that you're wise enough to know that there was something in you that attracted snare keepers, that created a pit for you. You created that. So you wanted this lesson. You and I, that's what's going to make you better. So in the mornings, when you feel like you cannot get out of the bed because you are in a war, get in your mind to read a scripture, talk to yourself. If you need to play music through the night to build your confidence, you do that. It's too much stuff out there for us to be laying down and taking it the way it is. Fight yourself and win over your old self. Cause that's who they are. No, you can't go with me. You should have went with me when you had the chance. You shouldn't have separated. Yes, you should have went with me. And now, you know, for those that are going through situations, I'm not telling you if you are um, 
in relationships or your family issues, you know, I understand that. What I'm saying is, is mentally and my heart, it will be at the altar for God. It will not be at the feet of man. It will not, man or woman. Why? Because that means that they become a God to me. It still means that I have not got the right picture that I'm focused on the high prize. What is the prize? The finish line to overcome this season. Why did I ever discount myself in situations? Why didn't I feel confident? And yes, we can say it's about our past, but when we realize that we're manifesting from our past thinking and our experiences in the past, then we gotta think better, think different change the thoughts. And, and you know, I, I do understand that some people say that they can't change it. If you can't change it, I can't, I can't tell you anything more than what I'm saying because the Bible helped me to know that you can change your thoughts. And from there, I would go on to find more to know that I could change, but it's a will to read something other than thinking about what you've already thought. That, it don't work. If it don't work and it ain't producing, let it go. It's better to think this is the day that the Lord has made than to think this is not the day. And we all have those, you know, oh, they whooping, yeah, they, they whooping my ass. Yes, they are and feel like it, but it ain't the truth. Uh-uh. You better get mad, get angry, and fight. Not physically, but fight in your mind. And that's when you start feeling better, right? The praise. You talking yourself up. Cause you ain't always in uh, the space where you can be around people. So you got to overcome the oppressive thinking. All right. I think a few people wanted to make some comments. Come on. I wish y'all would. Kayla. Hey, we can't hear you. <laughs> my, my mic's still not working. You just turned it off. Can you hear me now? Yeah, but low. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to piggyback a little bit off of what Jasmine said and what I've been doing is kind of fitting with what we've been talking about. Um, since our first conversation that I had with you, Miss Warner, and you told me to work on my throat um, chakra and to write down my dreams and stuff that I had because you, you saw in me something that I'd be able to interpret dreams. Um, well, Jasmine, I've been doing a little, I've been reading Napoleon and um, Earl Nightingale and Bob Proctor. Um, Bob shows or teaches um, self imagery and how we are made in three parts. We have our conscious, our subconscious, and then our body that operates from those two things. Um, from birth, we are, our subconscious pick up things throughout our life. We, we pick up what we shouldn't do, what we're told that we shouldn't do, our environment around us, um, feelings of how emotional feelings or stimuli of what it felt like to do something that we wanted to do. So that, that's an image that we put within us. Um, so he teaches how to tear down your old image and build a new image of you, a new self imagery by uh, every morning if you get up and you imagine yourself how you want yourself to be. For example, if you're losing weight, if you see yourself losing weight, that's the image that you're putting in your subconscious instead of your conscious mind. And the reason you said you couldn't pull the mask off is because subconsciously, you, you're feeling those things that's been tied to you a long time ago that you haven't let go of because you don't know how to let go of. So I just wanted to share that part because that's something that I did that I've been practicing to be able to boost my self-esteem because I, I too had issues where um, I wouldn't speak because I felt like nobody heard me. And then I would get mad and I 
uh, make myself speak out because now you're going to hear me, you know. So instead of instead of that, if you lose those subconscious imagery that's connected to you, you will be in a different vibration anyway, and you won't feel none of that. It's, it's, it'll be like you, even if somebody comes to you and say something to you, it'll bounce off of you because you're not even on that level. So you, you won't even feel those emotions. And how I have been learning to delegate my weaknesses off to somebody else, if somebody comes to me and they be like, you shouldn't do that, then I say, well, you know, we both will have to agree to disagree, but I'm gonna let you sit on that for a moment. And then you can come back and, um, and you know, if you feel like it's something else you want to say to me, I'll take heed to what you're saying, but this is where I'm at right now. And <laughs> when I tell you that has been a lot for me, that's, that's been a, a, a major ticket. Um, I have been <laughs> studying. Um, I got certified in a lot of things right um, so far. Um, <laughs> every time I wanted to, every time I say I'm going to do something, I go ahead and do it. Like, I've been saying I'm gonna set up my podcasts and, and and video chats. I need things, so that boosts me because I I say, oh, in my head I think of an image or I think of something that say I need. The next day I go out and get it. So I've been adding up things and putting it to the side, even though I haven't started it yet. That was a catalyst for me that's that's giving me that energy to say, look, you you gonna do this, you know. So I wouldn't have even got on and said nothing tonight if I haven't been <laughs> if I haven't been practicing. And I do that with nobody in here. My my boys walk around here like mom gone crazy because I be in here practicing like I be talking to a lot of people. So I can boost my myself up. I have been recording my voice <laughs> so I can hear how I sound because I, I thought that I didn't sound good enough or I thought I wasn't educated enough in my voice. To make people understand what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and, and and you can either understand it or not understand it. That's not my issue. That's your issue. So I wanted to share that, and maybe you can um look out at Bob Proctor and whatever his little imagery, self imagery, uh, uh meditation that he teaches that'll help you pull that mess right on off. Good for you, Kayla. Snaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lala. <laughs> <laughs> You do good, and you 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 are um much more vocal than um the last time I talked to you, so I'm very happy to hear you um speak out. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So um, Talana, you 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 want you were next, I think. Yeah. Sorry about that. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> um, so uh, good topic, Ms. Kim. And um, thank you always for the uh, your teaching uh, that you sacrifice. And I know that you studied for in Jasmine. I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. Very, very proud of you. <clears throat> yeah. And I love you. Um, so one of the things that the emotional prison is real passionate for me right now, because we've been conducting um, a group um, and an actual series called Toxic Topics on Wednesday nights. And the group has grown like it's ridiculous, but we have men and women that come on. And the stories and the things that you hear, um, one of the main components that's been consistent is that people are actually afraid to speak up. They are afraid to talk about, you know, the gentleman that came on, um, he suffered from PTSD and he was raped, you know, while he was in the military. And so, um, and he basically said that it's, it affected um, his ability to parent, his ability to be, you know, um, a husband and his son just committed suicide because, you know, he wasn't able to articulate, you know, affection and so forth. And so you get down to the, ba the basics of um, the different degrees of toxic. And, you know, one of the things that I saw that was consistent my sister contacted me on Monday and she basically was like, I'm afraid, you know, like she is afraid to speak up for herself. She is afraid to um, advocate for herself or um, even ask permission to be treated right. And so a lot of us, that, that inner child is something because it can be um, emotionally crippling in certain different, you know, dynamics if it's not you know, if it's not, if it's not dealt with. 
And <clears throat> sorry, someone's trying to call me. Um, and so one of the things that I told my sister was, I said, you know, we were raised in a time where um, our service to people and our service to humanity equaled, um, you know, love. That's what it was. And, uh, you know, she literally feels guilty <laughs> because she's, she's tired on one side of the side of the coin of how she's being treated but she's so guilt stricken of the emotional obligation that if i do not serve if i do not do this if i do if i don't do that no one's going to believe in me no one's going to accept me you know and we talked for like hours and you know it, it, it's it's one of those things where i think like miss kim you were saying the throat chakra you know but if you get you know if you go through enough, you know, and you pay your dues, you know, with wisdom and anything else, it will definitely get you to a place where, you know, it's you and God in that room, it's you and God in that space, and you have to deal with those underlining toxic dynamics that you may have overlooked. And it was, it was, um, it was intriguing to me to be around so many other people that have an understanding of what dysfunction looks like, but they didn't know how to get out. And so I challenged myself um, these several months, but even more so these, these last 45 days where I was like, you know what, God, we're gonna do a miracle manifest challenge. And I'm gonna keep a journal, you know, of all the things that you directly want me to deal with and see what manifests. And I can tell you I'm on day 40, 41. And for 41 days, thus far, everything that I petitioned God mountains needing to be moved everything that I asked for so far has come to pass and I mean I even had to reach out to Miss Kim last week I think it was the last week Miss Kim or the week before because I was like a, a little freaked out but there were still some things underlining that God wanted me to deal with and so the ability to be able to understand that this is a time for healing. There is no more of, okay, we're gonna put it under the carpet. We're not gonna really deal with the underlining layers. God is like, yeah, you know, that worked, you know, <laughs> decades ago, that's not working right now mm -hmm. because it's just breeding the same monster and it's morphing into something bigger and people are not being, you know, real with themselves. And I don't know that a lot of people are ready for that real realism, but I will say, Miss Kim, you've been, you know, telling us about it for a long time. And I'm just grateful to know that um, it, took a, it took a minute for me to be able to admit that, yeah, I bought love or I gave for the sake of love. And that's not healthy. My tax accountant is looking at me right now, looking at my books and he's like, um, you just gave money away. <laughs> he's like, you just gave stuff. You just gave, 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 which is not healthy. And so I'm thankful that, you know, a lot of you young women are on here to get to a, a place in time right now to where you're not in your 40s. And, you know, now you're peeling back certain layers of dysfunction. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that. And Jasmine, I'm really, really proud of you. And I love you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That is um, really um, awesome because it is um, like uh, where you and Poochie grew up in um, a time uh, that I was coming through and some, maybe some of you are. Well, the thing is, is that you were following what was being said and, you know, what was being said wasn't politically correct. And we do have a lot of, you know, young people that actually have information that's updated, that's coming in the world that have been here over the last 20 years, 30 years, um, into the 40 year old mark that have updated information. And this is where you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. It's a fine line between the truth and becoming free because people lie to themselves and they believe that that's their freedom, such as understanding what salvation is when they have been to church. It's not going to church and becoming emotional. It is untying the binds that have been on our mind, which is what we're discussing tonight. And, you know, I want to say also, Kayla brought up Earl Nightingale. These are, um, and, and um, Bob Proctor, these are individuals 
who have Bob Proctor is probably in his 90s. If he's not, he's in his late 80s. Earl Nightingale is talking about everything that we're talking about right now, but and 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 biblically, by the way, but not in the biblical context. You see, when you can take um, whatever your religion is and you turn it into spirit. So you shall know the truth and the truth will make you be free. And the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you. Then your interpretation of life becomes spiritual is what these men are saying. Now, where are the women? Now I know it's women out there, but I'm saying the challenge is where are the women? Because you got some strong black women and a lot of times um, they have, you know, crunched under pressure, but this is a time where um, there's strong women that's being birthed and birth is not an easy process, it's painful. So that means that you're going to feel birthing pains. Yeah, I, I mean, crying, I feel the pain, but every time I go through a mental pain breakdown, I got new information to give. Mm-hmm. You got to identify with where you are when you wake up with depression. And depression is just that it's there to press you down. You know, a lot of people go along with diagnosis and the diagnosis is saying that, well, I, you know, I, I, I'm diagnosed with depression. OK, well, me too. But guess what? The diagnosis will not have me. The diagnosis comes along with the time that I was born in. The energy that I am uh, a part of, that's not a part of my life. I'm not going to let it rule me. Why? Because I have power over it. How do I know that? Because I've changed from uh, the person that I was when I was 16, 17 years old um, in this here time. And I've seen the changes. So I continue to press forward concerning my personality and the issues that it bring me. The issues are not about everyone. I'm telling you mentally, the issues are who we are until we master them. When we yeah. master them, the people that show up in our experience, will know, they won't be anymore. They will either be changed or they will leave our lives because they're there to help us actually overcome. They're not there to keep <laughs> us bound. Yeah, they're not there to keep us bound. But if I keep looking at them, then I will be bound. Why? Because I'm looking at the wrong information. The information is in me. How did you manifest this in your life? And even though some of us, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to end it because we could talk about this here uh, again tomorrow night. Um, Ashley was supposed to have tomorrow night, but she don't have it. But anyway, if I keep looking at them, I will never ever get the information because I'm blaming them. No, I got to get to a place where I say, thank you for everything that you did. By the way, I'm smarter than you. I ain't got to tell them, but by the way, why you looking at me and you looking for me to fail because of how you have did life, I'm looking at the upward climb because this is what I believe in. See, I don't even believe in what you believe in. That's a part of my old paradigm. Mm -hmm. All of the material things. Listen, when you're coming out and you're you're getting ready to go into a new level, you're tested. Mm -hmm. All of the losses, seemingly. A man and a woman of God that really believe in spirit can't lose anything. Some things can be on hold until you pass them tests. And you could want some of that old stuff back. But what if the new stuff coming was better than the old stuff? So you got to trick your mind. Wait a minute now. Well, if I could have it better, okay? The money, more, more, you know? The house, better. And it's not just that. First, you're upgrading who you are. Your spiritual man has to be there. Because you're not going to manifest on lies. You, you're going to manifest lies, yes. You will manifest lack, yes, but you're not going to manifest abundance with the old part of your thinking, which said, well, you know what? Can't nobody see that, um, you know, I'm lonely, but um, I ain't telling nobody. Why not? Because as long as you're living in a lie of loneliness, if you're living in lies, 
your restrictions are there because you're not being true to yourself. Like I was talking to someone and you know how people have in their life, you know, I don't press religion on anyone, but I was so grateful when I heard them say, I'm not having sex with nobody else because I found out that sexual energy is, is power. Yeah, you're giving your power away to the demons. Mm -hmm. Now, feeder. yes, feeder energy. And, and, and you, know, you know why? Because that's where the manifestations begin in the root chakra. So when you was telling people and young women, and I don't really get into it because I feel like, you know what? I don't want to influence you on anything. It ain't religion, it's spirituality because sex is a spiritual act. By the way, you have babies and then you don't have an incubus baby, <laughs> succubus baby. You know, uh, you don't know who you having children with and now they don't come out and they acting like fools and you, you up here thinking you're gonna have some great child just because you thought on it, but you had done had sex with the demon. <laughs> Part of who you was, but you feel what I'm saying. So yeah, I, you know, I told them when they spoke up about that, I said, I'm glad that you said that because I would never encourage anybody not to. That's your life. Enjoy it while you can, but then know why you're getting snared. By the way, um, is it two or three of them? How about all of us having a party together, even though all of them ain't in the bed together? Mm -hmm. Imagine what that looks like in the spirit. Uh, <laughs> help, help us, right? Right. Yeah. So, um, Miss Kelly, do you want me to wait till tomorrow? <clears throat> for the, uh, you can go ahead now. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to um, expound on what I said earlier about the video that I posted that took me seven days. <laughs> um, and <clears throat> I'll just start by saying, you know, it is about tricking your mind or seeing yourself differently because I grew up in a household where and in a family where I was always told that I was pretty. But then in my house, I would hear my parents talking about I was too fat. My mom would always tell me, suck in your stomach, hold in your belly. And so I grew up with this chaos thinking on one hand, like, okay, I'm pretty, but my body's not good enough. Like, you know, so. And that has been something that I didn't even realize was the crux of my mental entraption my whole life that thanks to Miss Kim, because, you know, sometimes you hit a brick wall and you're just like, I know that I have to get over something. I just don't know how to do it. But I had to realize that I am enough. You know what I mean? Period. Period. And despite the unconscious behaviors or thinking that other people projected on me, I had to realize that within that hurt and pain was also where my freedom was. And it was about me looking at myself differently and realizing that all of those things that all those messages, those sing signals were really the blessing. It was really exactly what I needed and what I had to go through in order to free myself. And not to say that that was easy, it's shoot, I just turned 40, <laughs> you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. here I am at 40 years old, just figuring out how to untrap myself, but and it's funny because even, you know, I've, my, my highest weight in my life was probably like almost 300 pounds and then I lost it. And then it's just like, okay, I lost the weight. Now I have this extra skin. So I still didn't feel good enough. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share that because that's a re revelation that I had and something that really has freed me. And then, you know, I've been on a weight loss journey and it's so, it's so interesting because it was something that I, I embarked on last January. Um, 
and it'll almost be two years, but it started off just me wanting to change myself. I didn't know that this was going to turn into a a full on spiritual journey a few months later, you know what I mean? And then I just kept going, but, um, something's in my eye, but one thing that I've learned is that I could do anything really. I can do anything. And, um, I lost my chance of thought y'all, but, but anyway, I just wanted to share that because that, that was a piece of my story and something that I had to, um, I over, I had to overcome for myself and, and it, it wasn't really about the weight loss or, um, it was more about understanding and realizing that I'm enough mm-hmm. and, 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 encouraging myself, but also congratulating myself, like being, you know, it's so funny because sometimes we do things and we have to celebrate the, even the smallest wins and we don't, and we don't. Miss Kim, and I have to say this to you because I, I felt so embarrassed last night because I was looking on Facebook and I have where I can approve people that tag me in posts. Mm-hmm. And I and I was there and I and I saw the picture that I sent you with the certificate. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, it hit me all of a sudden. It like, Nayela, you this says congratulations because you went through a course to mm-hmm. be an executive coach and personal coach. And I don't know if I was just moving too fast. Yeah. Yep. That I didn't really recognize. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't get it. It didn't hit me until last night. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, that was a win. Yep. That I didn't even give myself the 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 time to even acknowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I um on the on the um part with the classes, I could see um, many people that I've taught, and I'm gonna call it a night. We can um meet back at six tomorrow. Um, I celebrate everybody that's made it through pivotal moments in their life and milestones. Whatever you did, if you took a step to do something. Um, and you overcame it, I celebrate you. When it comes to classes, one of the things that, you know, I found is, is that I've had to wait on people to get that information to me. It's an insult to me. I'm going to let you know, because I took a lot of time, right? I want y'all to know that, because it's important for you to um, pat yourself on the back, and then to get people to a place where they recognize Uh, their achievements. It's something that I had to come to. So when I have to run after people, I don't do it anymore. But I want, you know, I want everyone to know that, yes, you're not honoring yourself in milestones that really matter. Because people want to know, and they're celebrating you that don't even know you when, when you put it out there. And some people are like, well, you know, what difference do it make? It makes a difference because people are heralding, heralding your name into the universe that you don't even know. You need for your name to be spoken in the universe. When you're going through things, you need to celebrate yourself. And that's what it's all about. So. God bless everybody, the achievements that you've made thus far and those that you're going to make. You know? Thank you. God bless you. All right. So thank you we, for your patience with I us. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your patience with me too, because you know, yeah, it can be like that. So um I will see you guys tomorrow night that can come on. It will be six o'clock Eastern, and we'll go back into um belief and abandonment even though ashley won't be able to come on or um yeah uh it was boundaries. yeah okay boundaries okay all right god bless y'all kayla good Night. seeing you all right talana and uh Ta- latanya um oh she didn't click the oh no she didn't we'll see y'all I'm here. hopefully y'all have yeah. something to um bring to the table all right god bless you Bye, ladies good, good night, night. Good, good, night. Good, good job Jasmine. Jasmine. Thank you.